I want to start out with a question. And my question for you is, what is hospitality? It's become a loaded word in our, our culture. Um, it's become a politicized word. It's become a word that has so much meaning that it has no meaning at all. And we all probably have different perceptions. Is this hospitality? Yes. 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 So I am from the South. I'm from Louisiana, and baked goods are my love language. And right now, I am also not eating them. Um, so I've been like speculating on what she has in those little pies, and I'm pretty sure it's peaches. I don't know. Is this hospitality, a country club set up for a wedding, or whatever you can imagine that this might be, with a monogrammed logo on the wine glass? Is this hospitality? I vote no. <laughs> uh, in, the Pacific, in the Pacific Northwest, we're a culture of removing your shoes. So if you go to someone's house, they always ask you to remove your shoes. And I'm thinking, I like these boots. They go with this outfit. I really don't want to take them off, and my feet will be cold. I respect those of you who are, who are shoe removers, who have beautiful carpets. You don't want to get ruins, but I don't know if this is hospitality. <laughs> is this hospitality? Church greeters. Some churches have entire ministries built around greeting people when you come to the door. And next, is this hospitality? This is my very favorite depiction of the Annunciation, painted by Henry Osawa Tanner in 1898. I love how visceral it is. We know that Mary says, let it be to me as you have said, but her face is like, what the H-E double hockey sticks is going on right now? <laughs> She's terrified, but there's also an element of peace and an element of calm and an element of openness. So what is hospitality? I have the privilege each year of working with a group of five artists and five churches from across the Pacific Northwest, all the way down, all the way up from Vancouver, BC, down to Portland. We pair artists and churches together for a year-long program called the Cascadia Residency. And in this residency, we explore theology and the arts together, we explore the identity of the artist, and then we explore the reconciliation between artist and church. And some folks are really uncomfortable with me using the word reconciliation about artists, but I actually think we have a real opportunity if we can bridge this gap. Artists have felt alienated from the church for years for many reasons that I don't have time to go into right now. But this is our cohort from 2017. This cohort included a um, 3D designer from Nike, a young adult fiction writer, an opera singer, a textile artist, and a pastel artist. Um, a really diverse group of mediums. And every year, our very first retreat, we start with the question, what is hospitality? And then we brainstorm and we put it on a whiteboard because that's what you do. Um, and I was struck, I was struck that each year, um, we've done this three years now, the primary theme that surfaces when we talk about a group of artists, we talk with a group of artists about hospitality is creating space. <clears throat> creating space. It's not about cookies. It's not about greeters. It's not about taking off your shoes. It's about making space for the other. So with this idea of creating space, I started asking myself, why do the artists always come up with the same thing? Um, and it makes sense that a group of artists might understand hospitality this way. If you think about it, in a painting, it's negative space that helps the viewer make sense of a composition. It is pause in a musical piece that allows rhythm to flourish in a meaningful way. And for goodness sakes, what do artists covet more than anything else? Anybody know? Studio space, right? It's studio space. So it's confession time. I am a faithful Wesleyan. And I, I've been with Fuller for four years. And I'm usually surrounded by lots of Calvinists. 
So go with me here. Um, this is a portion of a hymn written by the, the more creative of the Wesley brothers, Charles Wesley. Um, I love both of them, but I'm partial to Charles. Uh, Let earth and heaven combine, angels and men agree, to praise in songs divine the incarnate deity. Our God contracted to a span, incomprehensibly made man. Does anybody know what a span is? So at that time period, a span was considered the length of a human hand. This is not a large space. And imagining the Godhead being contracted to a span. One of my favorite authors, Madeline Lee Engel, says, the virgin birth has never been a major stumbling block in my struggle with Christianity. It's far less mind-boggling than the power of all creation stooping so low as to become one of us. The Godhead, Godhead contracted I think that word is intentional, to a span. Mary chose to make space. When speaking literally to create space, you shrink or remove something else. Hospitality, creating space. So my next question for you is this. How can artists help us create space in our church communities? The scholar David Bentley Hart talks about beauty as an expanse, as an empty space between what is now and what is to come, a space for longing, mystery, lament, or other strong emotions and desires. It's often the case that our churches are not good at holding this kind of space. We move quickly away from discomfort of ambiguity intense emotion or silence to get to the point of your four point, five point sermon. We fear questions with no answers. But as Cutter said earlier, it's good to remember that Jesus talked with more questions than answers. He spoke in parables and he instructed with art. So the first type of space that artists create in our communities is inquisitive space. Understanding beauty as an expanse between the already and the not yet. At this point in our nation's history, our worship need not be merely didactic. I would argue that we cannot continue to go without the experience of mystery, affection, or longing in our communities. The people of God need a safe space to work out the empty space between the reality of the world as we know it and the joy of the coming kingdom. Artists can hold this space if we let them. I keep thinking about atoms being mostly empty space and how terrifying that would feel and what an amazing presentation that was earlier. Artists can help us hold this space. One of the biggest barriers to the artist church relationship, I think, is a language barrier. It's often the case that when two artists are having a conversation, they discuss ideas of beauty and art in completely different ways than they would with another member of the congregation. The opposite is also true. In the church, we tend to talk about beauty in hyper abstract theological terms like glory, majesty, or even gasp, sovereignty. Deborah Sokolov, an artist and theologian from Wesley Seminary attempts to redefine beauty as a relational space. This is another type of space that artists can help us hold. Rather than leaning into a definition of beauty that is inaccessible, she roots this concept in the Trinity and talks about beauty as a way of relating to one another. The space between an individual and the other, whether human or divine, becomes an opportunity to cultivate beauty. Artists can help us cultivate those in-between spaces that are sometimes difficult in the church. I believe that when artists are attuned to the culture, needs, and personalities of their individual congregations, they create work that generates dynamism and relationship. Their work becomes a gift and not an act of egoism. So go with me with this quote that's way too long for this slide, I apologize. <laughs> this is Athanasius. 
The Lord did not come to make a display. He came to heal and to teach suffering men. For one who wanted to make a display, the thing would have been to just appear and dazzle the beholders. Do you know artists like this? <laughs> but for him who came to heal and to teach the way was not merely to dwell here, but to put himself at the disposal of those who needed him and to be manifested according as they could bear it, not vitiating the value of the divine appearing by exceeding their capacity to receive it. So when artists are guided by the Spirit, when artists view their work as a gift, they're not going to exceed the viewer's capacity to receive it. This is not art for art's sake. This is art for the sake of the other. In contrast, um, a quote from Lewis Hyde in his iconic book, The Gift, but when you give a gift, there is momentum and the weight shifts from body to body. I love this quote. I love that it's visceral. I love that it's human. I love that it's incarnate. But I'm not going to leave you there. Hospitality goes both ways. We're called to submit to one another. In considering spaces of mutuality, how can the church create space for artists? The first way, I believe, is liturgical space. The liturgy creates space if we submit to the story of God. This may seem counterintuitive. Don't artists hate restrictions? But the liturgy need not be understood as restrictive. I've seen it over and over again. When artists and congregations engage the rhythm of the story of God, these boundaries empower freedom. They empower collaboration. They empower creativity. Submission to a historic narrative that we did not create ourselves is a powerful way to make room for the other, both divine and human. <clears throat> Another way that we as church leaders can create space for artists is to know your artists. Since my childhood, I have considered myself an artist in some capacity. And every time I would enter a new church community and someone found out that I was an artist, I would immediately be asked to paint a backdrop for VBS, to create an advent banner, fill in the blank. So I'm encouraging you to know your artists and not just their gifts. Relationships require space. Submit to one another. Make time to know your artists, their hearts, their struggles, not just their gifts. Go to their shows, buy them dinner, understand their practices and rhythms. What sacrifices do they make for their art? And then thirdly, predictably again, studios. <laughs> do you have an extra Sunday school classroom? Do you have a garage? This gift of space is invaluable for an artist. Um, a final type of space that's absolutely necessary to create this mutuality in the church is sacrificial space. And I actually probably should not consider it a separate, separate type because everything I've talked about today requires sacrifice. We must all become smaller. Creating spaces of mutuality in the church is a sacrifice for artists and congregations but a sacrifice that has the potential to cultivate beauty, generativity, healing, relationship, and most of all, authentic worship. We together create space for the triune God to enter in. So I'm gonna finish with another Wesley song. Uh, we're gonna have the lyrics up here for you. Uh, they're powerful. There's a lot of contrast, a lot of um, metaphor. And I would ask you to just experience this song as a prayer. And then we'll close.
shows himself our friend God the invisible appears God the blessed the great I am Sojourns in this veil of tears And Jesus is his name Him the angels all Being source begins to be, and God himself is born. Church, let's make space for our artists and allow our artists to open up spaces of mutuality that our communities desperately need. Amen.